So uh, thanks for coming to the talk today. Um, just start with a little bit of background about, about myself um, and, and then take you through what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I work for Tigera. So Tigera is the company behind Project Calico, um, which is the most deployed CNI for Kubernetes. Um, powers about 2 million nodes daily in about 166 countries. Um, Tigera is based in, in the US, but we have an office in Cork in Ireland as well, which is where I'm from. Um, so it's been a, a nice treat to come to the sunshine in Valencia from Ireland. Um, probably had too many Agua de Valencias this week, but it's been a great trip. Uh, it's my first time speaking at KubeCon. Um, it's actually my first time speaking in front of a group this big, so please just, just bear with me as we go through the, the talk. Um, my own background is in engineering, software development. Um, I'm still technically involved in all of the, the projects that we're doing at Tigera uh, and contributing, uh, but not, I'm not a security researcher, so I'm not going to go deep into um, ciphers and the type of uh, cryptography that's being used by WireGuard, um, but we will talk about some of, some of that as we go through it. Okay, so the goals today, so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about encryption as it stands in Kubernetes. Um, what are some of the popular options that people use currently, um, and why Calico decided to use WireGuard. So we'll recap a little bit about what Calico does. We'll talk about uh, WireGuard and how it works, and then how these mesh together to create a, a fully encrypted uh, cluster. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off talking about some gotchas. So we didn't get everything right when we, when we implemented this feature. Um, there's still things that we want to do in the future and, and, get, and look for uh, contributors to help us to do that. Um, and there's some, some gaps as well that we can talk about. So really, the, the, the thing with the talk today is to, to see this as, a, as it's an alternative option to MTLS with Service Mesh or IPsec. Um, one is not better or worse than the other. There's pros and cons for, for different encryption options in Kubernetes, but this is to present a, a different option, especially if you're already using Calico as your CNI. So the kind of story with encryption in, in Kubernetes today, what, what we see when we talk to our, our community, our users, uh, the, the kind of number one use case for, for using encryption is, is compliance, actually, uh, whether it's PCI compliance or HIPAA. Uh, that's always the, the top of the, the topics when we talk to our community. Uh, we also see a lot of our users talking about zero trust in general. So when you have um, plain text uh, requests flying around your Kubernetes clusters, node to node, potentially in a shared environment like the public cloud, uh, it can make you nervous if you have a zero trust approach to security. Um, so that is a topic that comes up a lot with our users when they're talking to us about encryption. Uh, and there's a recent NSA report uh, from last year uh, about hardening Kubernetes, and that recommends encrypting your, your data in transit. So that's, that's what we're talking about today. It's you know, data in transit. It's not data at rest, which is a whole other topic in, in Kubernetes. Uh, so by default, when you deploy Kubernetes and you deploy your workloads, when those services are communicating to each other, uh, there's no encryption by default. So everything is plain text. Um, some common options that people reach for, uh, they, they can reach for mutual TLS, uh, which is very popular, uh, encryption TCP and above. Uh, normally, this comes with a, a deploying a service mesh, either Linkerd or Istio, et cetera. And there's so many different options now with, with service mesh, and they all offer an MTLS solution. Um, another option is IPsec, uh, which is a, obviously an older technology. Um, kernel based. So, so there's a couple of different solutions. There are other options, and a lot of our users as well kind of roll their own certificate or uh, TLS implementations, often uh, embedded with the applications themselves. So, lots of different approaches. So, just to talk about MTLS a little bit more in terms of service mesh. This gives you client-server uh, authentication, mutual authentication, so both the client and the server are authenticated together. Um, with MTLS, with Service Mesh, they provide certificate management, certificate rotation, and they manage the lifecycle of, of the certificates for you. 
Um, different service meshes then will provide slightly different options when you're uh, deploying encryption on top of them. So, for example, Istio allows you to encrypt a corner of your cluster, just a specific part of your cluster via namespaces, uh, which is a very useful technique. Uh, Linkerd automatically enables encryption when you deploy Linkerd. So it's, it's not an option. You get uh, encrypted traffic by default service to service when you deploy Linkerd. OK, so what if you don't use a service mesh? Um, that's where we were thinking about this feature and, and how we can leverage what Calico already does for you as a CNI, uh, especially at the data plane level, um, and how we can provide a different encryption option, an alternative to IPsec at that lower level in the TCP stack. So what we'll do is we'll just recap a little bit here about what Calico does. Um, just a hands up, who uses Calico as your CNI? That's about half the people. That's pretty good. Uh, so it's, it's very battle-hardened. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, it originally started as a Python project for OpenStack uh, many, many years ago before pivoting to Golang and being a, a, a CNI plugin for Kubernetes. Um, as I said, it's power, it powers about 2 million nodes daily that, that we know of uh, across uh, 166 countries. So the kind of purpose of talking about that is to show how battle-hardened it is. So we can leverage some of what Calico already does to give us some, some goodness when we're integrating with, with WireGuard. Uh, one of the, the strongest points of integration is how it manages the data plane. Uh, so this is where we're going to interact with, with WireGuard. Uh, it supports Linux and eBPF data planes, and both of these, we want both of these options. So you can, you can literally swap out your uh, data plane option. You can go from Linux traditional IP tables based uh, data plane to eBPF and back again in a deployed running cluster using Calico. And we want WireGuard to work with both of these technologies. Um, we, we want it to be easy to configure. Um, WireGuard itself is extremely easy to configure and Calico is easy to configure. Uh, so this is just, uh, I'll just let you take in this diagram for a second. This is, this is a kind of a, a cut down um, architecture diagram of a part of Calico. Uh, as you can see at the top, uh, interesting things are changing in Kubernetes and they're getting stored in Calico's data store, things that we care about. Um, and then on, down in the data plane, you have a couple of Calico components. Here I've just highlighted a couple of them, Felix, which runs in Calico node, and CNI plugin, which interacts with the container runtime. Uh, these data plane components are responsible for, for programming uh, the kernel, programming the networking rules. So you can see here on the, on the bottom right, the two important takeaways. Calico maintains the rules of configuration on each node. So what it does is it, it gets a, a bunch of updates. It has a calculation graph, which kind of very smartly uh, determines the right order to apply the updates on the data plane. Um, and then it keeps that in sync. So that's the main purpose and the main goal for the data plane components in Calico. And this is battle hardened. The important thing is to imply these updates in the right order without interrupting traffic. So again, a takeaway from this, Calico is good at programming primitives in the kernel related to networking. OK, so how does that relate to WireGuard? Why is that important when we started looking at WireGuard? Uh, so WireGuard's a, a relatively new technology. I think most people have uh, at least heard of WireGuard. I know some people are, are using WireGuard uh, here that I've sp spoken to already. Uh, some of its uh, key characteristics, uh, the leanness comes from how small it is. So it's only 3,000 lines of code. It's very, very opinionated technology. It makes it very easy to audit that code. It makes it easy to read that code uh, and audit it for security purposes. Um, it is positioned as an alternative to IPsec at layer three. Uh, one of the key characteristics is that it's simple. So it's mostly transparent, so operationally simple. So when you deploy and configure WireGuard, it transparently handles 
symmetric key exchange and everything else for you, um, heartbeats and everything else. There's no key management involved. Uh, it kind of mirrors the way SSH works with keys. So you get a private key and a public key. And it's quite opinionated that way. So it, makes no, um, it takes no responsibility for how you get a public key from one peer or one node to another peer or another node. That's, that's your responsibility, just like it is with SSH keys. Uh, another reason why it's very opinionated is around the crypt, uh, cryptography technologies that it's chosen. Uh, for example, ChaCha20 and it's Diffie-Hellman. Um, so these are important. Um, and the reason why they're important is, well, they're state-of-the-art, so they're future-proof for now. But it's not trying to be everything for everyone, like IPsec, um, which is why it's so lean. Uh, when you're using WireGuard, you are using, um, for the most part, your existing Linux utilities. So you're using IP route, you're using routing tables, uh, you're using network interfaces, and you're using your standard Linux utilities to set that up, which is quite important for what we want. And there's also a fantastic tool called WG, which is for configuring the WireGuard portion of that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, it's been part of the Linux kernel for a while, uh, 5.6 upwards. OK, so a little bit more detail here about WireGuard. So as I mentioned before, it, it, it works by adding a network interface, just your standard networking interface. And you can configure that in a normal way uh, to create that interface. And then you can add and remove routes to send traffic to that interface using route or IP route. Um, so very standard um, primitives. As I mentioned before, we have the WG tool, and I'll show how that, uh, what that WireGuard configuration looks like in a second, and how it applies to pods and nodes in the cluster. Uh, essentially, what you get after you configure WireGuard is you get a, an overlay, which is an encrypted and encapsulated tunnel between two peers on either side of these network interfaces, WG0, WG0. Uh, these guys need to swap public keys initially and then they need to be configured with a list of uh, IP addresses that are allowed down the tunnel. So what's interesting here is WireGuard associates the tunnel addresses, the tunnel IP addresses, these allowed IP lists, with the public key, which is a one-on-one -on -one with a peer. So you might kind of start to see some similarities here around peers and nodes, and allowed IPs and workload IPs, pod IPs, which is a really, uh, a really neat mapping for what we want. So another takeaway here, which is similar to Calico, WireGuard is really good and, and designed um, upfront to work well with networking primitives and Linux utilities, the same way that uh, Calico is. So as I mentioned, you might have spotted that there's, there's a, a natural um, mapping uh, between peers and nodes in Kubernetes and these uh, allowed IPs, which would be a list of Workload pods, for example. OK. So we'll dive in a, a little bit deeper to Calico plus WireGuard and what WireGuard configuration looks like and how it applies to nodes and pods. So what you're looking at here and on the top, you've got three nodes in the cluster. And node A wants to send a pod on node A wants to send traffic to a pod on node B. And he wants to do that over the WireGuard tunnel. He wants it to be encrypted. And down the bottom left there, you have uh, some representation of a couple of pods on this node B in the middle. And node B has an IP address on the network, and each pod has an IP address as well. So in this case, what you're looking at, um, this uh, wall of text on the right-hand side is configuration. This is a WireGuard configuration. This is what you configure using the WG utility. Um, the first part of that is the configuration for Node A. So it has an interface, a WireGuard.Cali interface, a network interface on Node A. Uh, it has a public key and a private key. The private key is hidden, and it never leaves the node. You never share it at all. It's UDP, so it's listening on port. Uh, 51820, and it has a firewall mark, which is used for routing to make sure we don't get stuck in a loop when we try to shove packets down the, the WireGuard tunnel. 
and then have it exit the, the cluster on uh, exit the node on at E0. The other two parts of the configuration are peers. So the middle one is uh, node B, and the bottom one is node C. So you can see here uh, the middle peer is reachable on endpoint 10.240.064, which is the IP address of node B. Um, and then it has a list of allowed IPs, which represent um, host network pods, which is the first IP, and then the workload pods, which are the other two IPs. So you imagine as, as you scale this out and you add m more and more pods, more and more nodes, uh, this list is going to grow and grow. So this, is, this configuration needs to be present on every node in your cluster to form that encrypted mesh. And that's what, that's what Calico does. So Calico is programming and reprogramming this WireGuard configuration, uh, the routing rules, the IP rules, over and over again, every time it uh, listens and gets an update from uh, the relevant things that are changing in Kubernetes, it reprograms the data plane. Um, so that's all automatic, and Calico is really, really good at that. So if you kind of walk through the, the steps, there's a packet that's meant for node B. Uh, what happens is WireGuard asks, OK, what peer is that? It looks up its configuration, and it sees that that IP address, that pod, is represented by, uh, by that middle peer ID, which I'm not going to try to call out the, the ID in. Uh, so it encrypts the entire packet, the IP packet, using the public key for that peer. And then it looks up the remote endpoint. So what is the remote endpoint for that, uh, for that peer? So that's 10.240.064. It encapsulates it in UDP and sends it out over the tunnel. And then the opposite happens uh, on the other side, where the packet is de-encapsulated and non-encrypted and then passed to the pod. OK, so in summary, it's a perfect marriage. Uh, Calico maintains an eventually consistent data plane. Calico and WireGuard both like programming with Linux primitives. And WireGuard's pure and allowed IP concepts map very nicely to nodes and pods in, in Kubernetes. So as I mentioned before, as we're scaling this out, and one of the challenges is as, as more nodes come online and more pods are spun up and deployed, uh, they need to be added as, as peers, first of all. So each new node is added as a peer through WireGuard configuration. And then the public keys for that peer become part of the node manifest itself. So if you want to verify that a node is uh, configured with WireGuard, you can simply get that node using kubectl, and it'll have a, a field, which I'll show in a second, um, which is the WireGuard public key. And you can freely share that. That doesn't need to be kept secret or private in any way, similar to an SSH public key. Uh, the pod IPs that are um, deployed on top of that node, they need to become part of the allowed IP list in every other peer in the, in the, in the mesh, in the cluster. So the end goal or the end point of, of doing that, and this all happens in, in a few seconds, it is eventually consistent, but it, it only takes a couple of seconds across a, a medium-sized cluster. Uh, it results in an encrypted mesh. So all pod-to-pod -pod traffic uh, are now flowing through wire guard tunnels between all the nodes in your cluster. So this is a, a slightly different view. Uh, this is taken from a blog post I wrote recently about um, WireGuard and AKS. So it's, it gets quite tricky to support this type of model as you, as you look at AKS and EKS and, and those type of managed platforms where the, the networking is quite different. Um, so we do have support for EKS and AKS, um, but this is kind of a, a different way to look at it, uh, hopefully an, an interesting way to look at it. Uh, green is unencrypted and red is encrypted. So um, in this example, um, uh, this is actually a, a GIF originally, but it's not moving. Uh, the, the network packet will leave pod A. It'll uh, appear at the other side of the virtual Ethernet pair, which is Kali1234. So it leaves the pod namespace, network namespace down to the host network namespace. It gets redirected via routing rules in the kernel to the WireGuard device, where it gets encrypted and encapsulated 
and sent out over eat zero across the network, where it again gets routed to the WireGuard device, de-encapsulated, unencrypted, and then passed up to the, uh, to the vet pair to the right pod in the pod network uh, namespace. So that's the way it normally flows, but you might see a couple of, uh, couple of, interesting, uh, couple of interesting things on this diagram. Uh, so first of all, um, well, there's one really interesting thing. Uh, it's unencrypted as it leaves the pod, and it's unencrypted until it reaches the network device. Uh, and if you wanted to reach another pod on the same node, it's not going to go through the WireGuard device. So in that case, uh, when it hits the routing rules, there will be a throw rule. It will not hit that WireGuard device, and instead it will be redirected to the other vet pair for that uh, pod on the same node. So imagine a, a U-shape of green unencrypted traffic. So pod-to-pod -pod traffic on the same node is unencrypted in this, in this uh, approach. Um, it's come up a few times. Uh, it's not easy to, to, to fix. It's not easy to um, support this, uh, but we are looking at it. Uh, you could move uh, the WireGuard device into each pod, for example, um, but you'd be fundamentally changing the way some of our network policies are handled in Calico at that point. So it's not, a, not an easy problem to fix. Um, ultimately, where we ended up in terms of ease of configurability and, and setting this up, uh, we ended up in a place where you can enable WireGuard with a, a, a single command. So you patch the Felix configuration uh, CRD, and you enable WireGuard. This deploys and enables it throughout your entire cluster. And similarly, you can disable it um, with a single command as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, you fetch the node. So uh, when you get the node description, you'll have a WireGuard public key, uh, which indicates that uh, it's been successfully set up on that node. Uh, this is very, very useful, uh, but we could do a lot more here as well, of course, in terms of how we uh, do pre-flight checks and things like that. I think we hit the goal of uh, ease of configuration. OK, so in terms of uh, performance, so there, there is a trade-off um, to consider. And this, these diagrams are um, a little bit out of date, but I think they're still relevant. Um, we're, we're using this open benchmarking tool, and we're going to publish some new results soon. And we're going to include comparisons to MTLS and service mesh solutions. Um, these are in comparison to three other CNIs that are all using IPsec. Uh, so Calico using WireGuard and these three other anonymous CNIs that are using IPsec. And they're anonymous because uh, some of these guys have changed their implementation to also support WireGuard. So I don't want to um, badmouth them in any way by showing out-of-date uh, performance metrics. Uh, the first one here is node CPU. So this is average node CPU usage um, uh, as we're running the HTTP um, benchmarks. And as you can see, there's about a 30% increase in CPU usage uh, when you're using WireGuard. And that's all of the uh, encryption that's happening. Um, so that's, that's quite significant. Uh, so it's definitely something to be very, very cognizant of if you're interested in using WireGuard um, with Calico or, or other CNIs. Uh, but on the flip side, uh, the throughput is six times more using WireGuard than using uh, IPsec. Uh, so that's the diagram on the right-hand side. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the bandwidth in terms of megabits per second. So higher is better on this case. So it's a trade-off. Like everything else in software engineering, you have to weigh up the cost of throughput versus CPU usage, resource usage, and uh, determine which one is more useful for you. OK, so in terms of um, some gotchas and um, some future work that we're looking for uh, and, and definitely looking for help with, uh, we'd love some uh, ideas and contributions. Um, we, we've had a lot of issues raised on, on GitHub around WireGuard, which is fantastic. It means people are, are trying this and exploring the feature. Um, as I mentioned, pod to pod on the same host being unencrypted does come up from time to time. 
And it's something that um, we have some ideas around, but again, it's not, a, not an easy problem to fix. Um, some more pre-flight checks um, is another, uh, another topic that comes up. So when you enable WireGuard using that single command, you don't really know if it's worked across all of your nodes or not. So there's an assumption here that WireGuard is actually installed in the operating system that you're running across all your nodes in your cluster. So if WireGuard is not running in a node across your cluster, let's say it's installed on 50% of the nodes in your cluster, um, you'll be able to enable WireGuard. Um, traffic will flow across all of your nodes, um, but it won't go down a WireGuard tunnel between a node that has WireGuard and a node that doesn't have WireGuard. So what that means is portions of your cluster, uh, the traffic could be flowing unencrypted. Um, and it might be, you might be unaware of that fact if you expect um, the result of that enable command to turn on WireGuard um, to tell you that it's not working. So we have a little bit, a little bit more work there to do around pre-flight checks. Is WireGuard installed and in all of and supported in all of the kernels that are running in the node, and has it been successfully successfully installed across the node? Um, we want to show that to people in the command through an API, so that they can determine and be safe and be sure that encryption is turned on and truly being uh, used across the entire cluster. Uh, just to skip race conditions for a second, so the, the flip side of that is, uh, sorry, sim similarly, uh, we'd like to give more fine-grained control. So right now it's all or nothing, so you turn on uh, uh, encryption for your entire cluster. Now you can go through node by node and disable it on specific nodes with a, with a command again, uh, if you want to. Um, but we'd like to do something like Istio are doing with uh, name, namespace based encryption and offer like this policy based encryption where you could say uh, this corner of my cluster I want to be encrypted and we'll, we'll keep the rest unencrypted. Um, so that's something that we're definitely going to work on. Uh, IPv6 support, so WireGuard supports IP, IPv6. Some of our code is IPv4 specific, unfortunately. Um, so we have a little bit of work there to do. Um, and it's, it's not quite a, a simple case of just uh, enabling IPv6 support. There's some, some quirks there as well that we need to figure out. Uh, we've, had, we've had some race conditions around cleaning up uh, WireGuard routing rules um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the speed of enabling and disabling WireGuard. So if you're, if you're quite trigger happy with enabling WireGuard and disabling it, there can be some, uh, there has been one or two race conditions that we've been solving as they come up and trying to test and find more. So we've been pretty aggressive at trying to hunt down those, those race conditions and, and fix them. So that's it, that's the end of my talk. Um, there's a few links here for um, related material and uh, Tigera and all the uh, open, uh, open source project Calico guys are at Tigera boot S24. Uh, so come over and say hello to us if you, if you want to ask us any more questions afterwards. Thank you. All right, we have five, um, some minutes for Q&A. For the folks who decide to run for, for lunch, please be quiet. Thank you. Uh, when I active, uh, activate WireGuard, does the MTU configuration of the VATH interface, Calico interfaces, will change to have in mind that new overhead? The MTU overhead? Uh, no, like the MTU will change to adapt to the new overhead. For I, I can't hear you. Sorry, can you? It's just some background noise. It's not. So basically, when I activate uh, WireGuard over an existing uh, yep. configuration, this activation will uh, change my MTU configuration for the yes. Calico interface it will. automatically? Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Thank you. Anyone else? Someone was there. Um, you said that pre-checks are uh, missing. I'm wondering what will happen if somebody will uh, kill the process on one of the nodes. Is it still working or it, it will uh, drop the encryption? So cal cal there, are certain, there are certain parts of um, uh, the data plane configuration, the WireGuard data plane configuration, that if you went in and changed that manually, Felix, the data plane component, will overwrite that and set the world back to the 
the right way that it should be. Um, in terms of killing off WireGuard itself, so WireGuard runs in the, in the kernel. Um, but I think if you did try to kill it, I think you possibly could um, result in having unencryption, unencrypted on that node, yeah. Felix doesn't monitor the, that it's running. Uh, it, it's just responsible for the routing rules and configuration. So it's not going to monitor the process itself. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> thank you for the, for the wonderful talk. Uh, <coughs> I have this question. Uh, you, you said that the biggest motivation for end-to-end -end encryption is uh, compliance. Uh, but with the AKS and EKS implementation, we see just the traffic between uh, two ports, uh, <coughs> the, the service port and the, uh, <coughs> the less work port is yep. encrypted. Would that invalidate the whole system? So it, that's the way it used to be. So the question there is, so for AKS and these managed environments, uh, a portion of the, uh, of the um, host network pod to pod could be unencrypted. Uh, so that's the way it used to work. Um, we have a feature called host to host encryption that were rolled out for AKS and EKS only, and that encrypts everything. So every, including uh, traffic to the uh, management APIs, okay, to the master node. So everything is encrypted host to host, uh, kind of like IPsec. You don't really have a choice. It's not just pod to pod. Um, and we rolled that out on AKS recently and EKS specifically for that reason. So that, that is covered in that blog post I referenced. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions? First of all, thanks for the talk. Um, you said that you automatically generate the public keys and private keys for every node, and that you can get these public keys uh, if you do a get to the node. Um, do I, as the administrator, have to um, uh, spread these keys to all nodes, or does, is that automatic? And if it's automatic, how do you prevent um, some, some keys to be injected? So uh, another public key getting injected that you don't actually want in there. Sure. So they, it, again, it's, this is a, very, very similar to how you would manage your SSH keys. So in terms of the first part of your question, uh, Calico looks after all of that for you. So you don't have to manually distribute those public keys and keep them up to date in your cluster. Uh, so Calico does that part for you uh, using the Calico data store as the main kind of backing data store for public keys. Um, if you injected a, a public key, it's not going to work with the private key. So I think that, uh, that might help with some of the second part of your question, if I understand it correctly. The idea was that I inject the public key of uh, an ad additional node that's not actually okay. something that I'm that actually belongs there. Where okay. of course I, I, as the attacker, have the private key for. I okay, I see what you mean. So that's fine. That's you. You can do that. But you'll also need then to program the allowed IP list and the, and add a new peer to the WireGuard configuration in every node in the cluster if you want those nodes to talk to your bad node. Okay, so we don't maintain a list of like good nodes versus bad nodes. So potentially, if you did that, you could then, you'd have to get onto every node, you'd have to program the WireGuard configuration to know about your bad node. You'd have to add the pod IPs from your bad node to the allowed IP list in all of the WireGuard configuration. What would happen is Felix would just overwrite that itself because it's not stored in the data store. So even if you went and did that manually, it would be overwritten fairly quickly by, by Felix. Okay, thanks. Uh, no. We, Felix doesn't do any key rotation. All right. Um, All right. Last question. Thanks, everyone. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I wanted to know if Calico supports like mesh, but uh, outside a cluster. For example, you got some. Uh, another cluster in a, another region, and you want to peer them. Uh, some service mesh supports it, but does Caligo support it? Uh, it? We don't support it right now. That is a, I should have added that to my future list. That has come up before, actually. So can you uh, extend the encryption 
outside of the cluster to some external service, another cluster, or, or your client, maybe your developer laptop. So that, that's something that people are definitely, definitely interested in. Um, there's, there's companies working specifically on that, end-to-end -end encryption using WireGuard, uh, open source companies working on it. Uh, it has come up from one of our users, one of our, our big users, so it's something we will have to look at. Um, it, you could do it manually for now, but again, the risk is that what you change in the configuration will be overridden by, by Felix. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Not supported right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Okay. And Thanks. have a nice lunch. Thanks, guys.